Why should Shohei Otani pick the Cubs? That and more next. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Best way to support the show is by listening every day on your preferred audio platform and by pressing like and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you over the Thanksgiving weekend to you as we went over 7,000 subs. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Well, why should baseball's biggest fish pick the Cubs over the other teams still involved in this process? Sam, as we get back to it this week, you had a great solo episode for Monday detailing where Jed Hoyer stands in all of this. And where the Cubs stand on Otani is very clear. That's the person they want. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, in in response to a Sonny Gray signing by the Cardinals this morning, I got a lot of, you know, hey, when are the Cubbies going to do something? And where are the Cubbies at? And Cubbies, Cubbies. And, well, who's saying Cubbies, though? Uh, I say it. Really? Yeah, and I'd just like to officially announce I was completely wrong about Thanksgiving food. I did it right for the first time uh, this Thursday at the uh, at, at the parents of Anthony's home. And, you know, shout out to them. It was phenomenal. And I will be looking forward to Thanksgiving every year from here on out. I think Otani is the, the holdup. <laughs> I think Shohei is the holdup, right? Like he's a huge domino totally. fall. You have to figure out, you know, if you have 450 to $500 million, you know, waiting for one player, it's really hard to operate uh, until that happens. So hopefully it happens sooner rather than later. Uh, from, from everything that, that we've heard or I've heard, the Cubs are, are still very much in play for that. Like I said on, on uh, Monday's show, I even said on Twitter that I think there's like about a 50-50 chance, which is extremely high considering that four, five, six teams will be in the bidding. But I feel confident about it. And, you know, I think hopefully he'll make a decision early enough to where if they don't get them, there's still opportunities to pivot and still have a successful off season, which I think is important. And, and to the people out there that, that may be listening right now going, Hey, you know, no more Otani enough. There's nothing th th that is it right now. That, that is the holdup. That is why, you know, we aren't seeing any major transactions from the Cubs because, you know, he holds the keys. It's no different than when LeBron James is a free agent and when Kevin Durant was a free agent. You don't really see any big moves happen until, until like you said, the, the big fish decides where, where he's going. I have heard nothing but the Cubs being in a good spot. Um, you know, I do think there's five teams involved. I think it's the Cubs, Dodgers, Giants, uh, Rangers, and Angels. And, and 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 I'm sorry, I have to cut you off. The uh, the th the last three teams make no sense to me. None. Right. Right. If if you're trying to win, which which by all accounts he is, why would you go back to the Angels? If you are trying to win, the Giants aren't in a great position to do that right now by any means. And they and have a bad ballpark. And they have a very difficult division. The Dodgers plus the, the reigning defending National League champions in their division. And the Padres are no pushover. Mm -hmm. And the Rangers just won the World Series. And I know that this isn't like basketball where it's like, oh, Durant to the Warriors. They won without him. But still, do you really want to go to a team that just did it without you? Well, that's part of the fun of this phase of it or not, depending on your perspective. But I do think that Otani values and appreciates different things. And he does that at a different scale that we're used to. Right. I think you're onto something when you talk about the Rangers. Well, they just won the world series. Doesn't he want to win? Well, does he want the pressure of, of multiple world series? Uh, well, he wants a, a, a nice ballpark, favorable hitting conditions. Well, the giants then are out. Uh, sure. The comfort of the angels, but 
it's no secret how how porous the Angels have been. And you can say since Otani landed in the United States that the Angels literally had the two best players in the world and never advanced to the playoffs. So that's why for me, it really is a Cubs or Dodgers lens. And during this episode, I'm not going to use a, you know, to use a college football term, I'm not going to negatively recruit. I've made that decision. I'm not going to smush or smash the Dodgers. You're going to see a lot of fan feedback. Some of it does it, does that. Some of it, some of it doesn't. But I think there's a multitude of reasons why he he should sign with the Cubs. And and that's that's the field that I want to stand on. That's the flag that I want to plant. Sure, we could talk about the Dodgers and criticize all we want. Maybe you will do that. Um, <laughs> well, you know I will. But but here here's what's going for the Cubs. You have a franchise that is on the cusp of something, and and dare I say, something great. You know whether it's the impact players on the current roster, whether it's the top farm system in baseball, whether it's the premier resources, whether it is Wrigley Field. And oh, by the way, how about four weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, when they hired the best in-game manager in the sport? So I think from the Cubs perspective, they should feel good. And I feel good about where they're at. Now, later this week, maybe we do discuss kind of the darker part of this. Well, what happens if they finish in second? But I think for right now, about a week or so out from him making a decision, because it would be it would be surprising to me, Sam, if it lasted past the winter meetings, which end next Thursday, December 7th. I do think the Cubs are in a good spot. I agree and appreciate everything you said, except for please, you know, on our show, obviously, you know, you have 50, 50 say I have 50, 50 say, please don't mention college football on here. Right. Um, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, had a great weekend, but a little too much football for me sure. um, as, as we're about you know, 40 minutes away from kickoff. Iowa 10 and 2. Minnesota. So no, I um I agree. I agree with everything you said. I think it it, it was put pretty pretty smoothly. I, I just think that the point I'm trying to make today is that I don't see the Cubs really doing anything significant until we know where Shohei is going, right? It's it's just one of those things. It's a, it's a long term. You're, you're you're thinking long term with it, right? And you just have to kind of just you know let things happen here and and, and see what happens. So, um, I I support that. There there's so many different things I've heard with Shohei's contract. I think I talked about it on Monday's episode. I uh, was proud of that one, by the way. Contract creativity. Yeah, That's right. What Jeff Passan's Con- calling it. Yeah, well, and it's nice to be on the show with Jeff Passan. Thanks for joining us uh, with all <laughs> you, with all your reporting these days. Shout out, you know, some people have things to say. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm interested to see what the deal he signs and and how it happens. But I, I, I think the Cubs are they're all in and they're going to make their case. And like you said, I think Shohei is very interesting. He's not he's not American. He's probably approaching this a little different than maybe Jed and other front offices are used to. I bet you, I bet you, the team that gets him will be surprised when they got him. Like I don't think it's going to be one of those things where he gets out of a meeting and goes, Jed, I'm coming to Chicago. Like right, I don't think right. I don't think it's gonna be like that. I think Jed will find out and be like, oh wow, I, I didn't think I didn't think that went that well, you know. So we'll see what happens. I'm interested to, to see our our listeners' uh, feedback of why he should choose the Cubs. I have my own case that I'm ready to to give whenever you give me permission to do that. So, what are your thoughts on a twist to this whole process being the Cubs or another team, maybe front loading the deal, say fifty to sixty m's for the first two or three years? Uh, possibly even with an opt out after those two or three years, or do you think he just wants a straight contract, ten plus years, four hundred plus M's? Well, would would would, would three years sixty? It'd be three uh, years for two hundred M's, basically. Oh, and then and then who gets the opt out? He does. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I would be fine with that. Okay. I, I I've learned. I've learned the last couple of years that GMs are much more years are the bigger problem. 
Right. And so, you know, yeah. I mean, three years, 200. I mean, that's, we're talking about. My math doesn't line up. Yeah. It's a little high. I, I'd It'd probably be about say, like 160 for three. Yeah. Yeah. Like over 50 million a year yeah, for three yeah, yeah. front load it. Yeah. I think, I, I still think you're going to have to give them a bigger guaranteed lump sum than that. So I think it'd be like, it would be an opt out for him after three, but the total deal would still be in the seven, eight, nine range. Cause he's not going to just gamble and just say, Hey, in three years, I got to prove myself again. I think it might be an early, an early opt out after year three for him. Why do you think he should pick the Cubs over the Dodgers or somebody else? You want me to go now? Yeah. You don't want to tease it. We could tease it. No, no, whatever. <laughs> um, Sure, I'll answer right now. Got me right off card. Um, Sam's gonna answer this uh, right after this. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Oh boy, squirrely this NFL season <laughs> with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet. That's one hundred and fifty bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. And the app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, overs, unders, and more. Why bet on the Bears? The disastrous franchise there on the lakefront who are about to kick off as we're recording here Monday well, evening Central Time. Minnesota, Minnesota. The Dodgers are the betting favorite for Otani. The Cubs are second uh, per, per FanDuel. Uh, so we're going to keep tabs on that as well. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel, official partner of the LockedOn Podcast Network. Why should Shohei Otani pick the Cubs? Before we get into your feedback, your answers on that question, I have 10. 10 a nice round, even number. 10 screenshots here pulled from YouTube from last week. Sam, why do you think? Otani should land on the north side. One word. One word. Mark. Legacy. <laughs> Legacy. Okay. Um, I think Chicago is the perfect place to leave a legacy that will be remembered forever. Whereas the Los Angeles Dodgers are, it's more of a, you're a big fish in a bigger pond, right? You have LeBron James right now in that city. You have Anthony Davis in that city. You have Freddie Freeman. You, you have all these guys. And no matter what happens, it doesn't matter how good Shohei Otani performs, that city belongs to the Los Angeles Lakers. It always has. It always will. Chicago is different. Yes. When the Bears are good, it is a Bears town. But when the Bulls are good, it's a Bulls town. And when the Cubs are good, it is a Cubs town. And he will be treated like royalty if he comes here. Tickets, everything will sell out. You go you go to the Dodgers, people are, are going to miss his first at bat because they're stuck in traffic and they don't care. Okay, It is Chicago has its negatives, right? Our sports teams aren't very good. But the one thing about Chicago sports fans, is they are loyal to a fault. See the Chicago Bears, to a fault. And they are starving. And they are hungry for not only a great team, but a, a, a special, special player. I know I don't follow a lot of hockey. I know you had Patrick Kane and Taze. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just don't go there. It has been a long time since we've had, you know, it looked like it could have been Chris Bryant. It wasn't. OK, it wasn't Rizzo. Those guys did the job. They won a World Series. Yep. But a true blue blood world class superstar. It's been since when off the top of my head, Derek Rose. And, and, and he got injured before that. Sosa. Yeah. You want to you want to throw so Erlock, so. you want to throw Erlocker in there. He's a Hall of Famer. But. Yeah, that's a good one, actually. But, you know, this city knows how to treat sports royalty. Michael Jeffrey Jordan, Walter Payton, he could be on that level, Matt. I'm serious. No, I know. Oh, absolutely. 
And I just think well, the wrinkle I, is that he already is in some cases. In and terms and of the talent. last the last thing I'll say is I think a big part of Shohei Otani, the big frustration among baseball, is that he wasn't getting his due with the Angels in Anaheim around the country. If he comes he to Chicago, if he comes to Chicago, he's gonna get that and more. It is about legacy. Leave a legacy. You can have all the money in the world. If you don't leave leave a legacy on this earth, whether it's a small one, like you know, you know, somebody that that works really hard and leaves a legacy in their company with their family, or in this case, a big stage. If you're not leaving a legacy, what are you doing? You're not leaving any legacy in that Laker town unless he's got a really good jump shot. Well, I think you bring up a lot of good points. No surprise there. One point. And, you know, legacy being important to him, uh, you know, we've gotten some murmurs on that. And, uh, you know, Will, is he going for the most money? I like to think no, because the Giants are going to offer the most money. They, they, they offer, they have the most to, they have the most to lose. Uh, you know, it was well publicized that Judge was going there. That was in, inaccurate. They they agreed to terms with Correa, then then that deal was backed up. So they they have a lot of a lot of money to burn. So and to I want to say this publicly: if he goes to the Giants, they could have him. Okay, if that's what he wants, and he goes to, for the Giants, with all due respect to the great Shohei, I'll be fine. Well, that's who's going to offer the most money. That's a lateral move, right? All right, let's look at some screenshots here. This first one is from Jeff. I think Otani would choose the Cubs because they were an option before but had no DH, and he wants to go to a team where he'd be the star, not Kershaw, Betts, Freeman, et cetera. Very good. This next one is from Brady, one of our everydayers. He's made two lockdown Cubs appearances. He says, I think the best reason to pick the Cubs over the Dodgers besides the city ballpark in history is that Sam said his legacy. Did I say that already? On you the talked show? about this <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. But I think legacy matters to Otani. <laughs> Durant was seen as an all-timer and still is, but there will always be the asterisk that he couldn't do something on his own. I agree with that. I don't think any of those championships are real, Brady. Yeah, yeah. If Otani goes to L.A., he will be seen in that same light, joining Mookie, Freeman, and company. If he comes to the Cubs, he will be seen as the superstar that the Cubs build around moving forward in the face of the next great Cubs team. Fantastic. Can I can I can I comment on that really quick? Yeah. Um. So I I don't like to do a ton of baseball to basketball parallels because it's just w- when Durant went to the Warriors, it was a foregone conclusion they were going to win. Whereas if if Otani goes to the Dodgers, they could lose a three out of five series to anybody right. because it's baseball. But Crazy. his point his point still stands because the Dodgers already have established that winning culture. Whereas Otani will be the backbone of the Cubs winning culture. He he would be this generation's John Lester. When oh. John when John Lester came to the Cubs, that was the first time everybody around the league was like, hey, Cubs are here. Cubs are here. He would and be I, an ideal addition at this stage in their past. Yeah, he 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 would become the culture to his point. Here's from Brian, who was on the first sound off. He thinks Cubs should choose, uh, Tani should choose the Cubs over the Dodgers because the Dodgers have always been good. Uh, Cubs have showed last year what it can be, and especially with the great manager, he should be a part of this next great Cubs team. Uh, this is from Jesse, I do believe. Some of the usernames get a little bit uh, wonky here coming up. He talks about a smaller field, as that will tremendously help his home run total, that the fans would be more appreciative of him, including his first at-bat, home opener at at Wrigley. Um, there's no place like Wrigley and Cubs fans. Oh, wow. Ty wrote an absolute novel. And, uh, you know, this is a 20 to 30 minute program, Ty, so I can't read this aloud, but I am putting it up on the screen right now. And uh, Ty talks about Otani's priorities to win, mentions about a uh, council's quote about the organization being in good health, uh, mentions council being better than Roberts, uh, does harken back to 2018 when uh, he picked the Angels the first time around. Um, the Dodgers will always be the Dodgers, but the Cubs are truly on an incredible incline moving forward. Jed, get it done. That's that's from Ty, uh, who's who I believe still needs to be Venmo. Uh, this no, is no, from I, I don't. I took care of Ty. 
This is from Aaron. Otani should sign with the Cubs because the atmosphere at Wrigley will only make him better. Very good. Oh, so you're just you're breezing through these puppies. Here's from Lawrence, one of our everydayers. Oh, great everydayer. Treat Chicago treats its superstars yeah. like no place else. The fans at Wrigley, me and Lawrence, man, are special. He's got Saya. We haven't heard much about Saya as being yeah. a reason. Council outstanding manager. D day games being more player friendly. Ooh, I've never... And the neighborhood being player friendly as well. What do you are think about day, day games, games? Are day games more player friendly? I've I've also I've heard the, the opposite. Like, yeah, it might be better hitting conditions, but you know, players usually like to stay in routine. They don't like to get home and, and go to bed at midnight and then play at you know one twenty the next day. I, right. I I've never seen that as a positive to bring him here. But I guess I could think more about that. For me, Matt, everything changed for me when I found out. When I I don't remember if it was Heyman. I think it was Heyman that said geography's not a factor. That was a big one. That was Morosi. Oh, Morosi. That was a big report. My Italian friend. Yeah. Well, it is a big report because that means he would come here. Right. That that was huge. Right. Uh, this from B. Ross. I think he picked Chicago to be the star. Yep. So now we're seeing a lot of crossover here. Uh, he actually name drops the Lakers and LeBron. Says Otani should come to Chicago to be the king and launch balls out like Sammy Sosa. B. Ross? B. Ross? Oh, man. These Here's from are... Nick. He's got two main reasons. Cubs over the Dodgers. Dodgers Nick Cozy? Piled on. No. No. This okay. is Nick Williamson, 5798. Uh, face of the franchise and fan loyalty there's no fan on earth more loyal to a team than cubs yeah fans we stayed loyal for 108 years between championships we'd stay loyal to him the whole time he'd be in cubby blue i don't think the same would be true for the dodgers then you add in factors like the ballpark the history etc that's from Nick. These are great answers. I didn't that's, look at these. It's making the me emotional, man. No, man. It's all, it's, it's, it, we're all thinking in the same light. No kidding. I, right. I, I have LEDs. And finally, Jim, one of our great everydayers, Sam. Love Jim. Would you like to read this one? Yeah. I, if you don't mind, I I'd think like you to. you should. Yeah. Well, Jim's a really smart guy. So. Mr. Otani, this is from Jim. There is momentum happening here. You are about to undertake the most important decision of your career. Let me help you. There is one word that separates the Cub fan from a Dodger fan, and that word, according to Jim, is passion, all caps. If you want to start a 7.05 p.m. home game with half the crowd either on the L.A. freeway or on the concourse ordering a Dodger dog with ketchup and kraut, then sign with the Dodgers. If you can walk to the plate and it's so quiet, you can hear Ben Affleck tell his starlet date, did you know I played Bartman? Then Batman. sign with the Dodgers. Batman. Oh, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, mean, I was going to say, when did he play Bartman? Did I miss that film? <laughs> if you want to be loved by a fan base that still treats an 80-year-old former player like first cousin sign with the Cubs. If you want to walk to the plate with the bases loaded and have 40,000 fans, standing and cheering and you realize it's only the first inning that sign with the Cubs. This sounds like some sort of like Jewish prayer. Uh, if you want to play in front of a passionate fan base that cries after a tough loss, but cries harder after a big win then sign with the Cubs. Tough decision. I think not. Reminds me of like phenomenally done. Yeah, that was great job, Jim. It had that like repetitiveness that like some like religious prayers do. It's so good, right? That was really well put. Oh, man, 10 great responses from our great listeners. We truly have the best listenership in all of sports podcasting. Don't you feel that way? Yes. Fantastic. Well, we got a little sample of why Otani should pick. Then the, pick the Cubs. The Cubs. Then we should do like a holiday parody song. Of that. Then pick the Cubs. Absolutely. I'm into those. I have some some words on the process itself, and I have a basketball comparison to make. We've already done it on this episode. We're going to do it once more next. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today covers the top sports stories of the day 
with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Search Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. We don't know much about Otani's process right now, although I would almost venture to say that his camp has to have some clarity. We're less than a week away from the winter meetings. If you recall last year, Jacob deGrom got it started off on that Sunday evening, signing with the Rangers. So we're only days away from that, a four- or five-day winter meetings process. And I have to say, the secretive process right now, all due respect, I do think is unfortunate for the sport. Um, You have one of the best athletes on the planet, excluding the sport of baseball, but any sport, and nobody knows anything. Uh, We know little bits and pieces, little murmurs here and there, maybe even some stuff we've heard on our own, Sam. But, you know, what about meetings with teams? You know, what about uh, other details of what's going on? How about a picture of him at a ballpark? You know, with LeBron in 2010, we knew Cavs, Heat, and Bulls. We saw him going to the UC. We saw him in Cleveland. We saw him in Miami. We knew those were the three finalists. We knew he was going to make a decision on television. I'm not saying he has to make a decision on MLB Network or ESPN. Why not? But I think it would help the sport. I think this process, sworn to secrecy, is bad. 100% agree. Okay. This is a missed opportunity by baseball. You're never going to have a player of this caliber be a free agent again. It should be all over the place. Now, some of it's his doing. He doesn't want that. It is his doing, yeah. But again, that's poor marketing by him. He should be, where am I going to go? You know, posting stuff. Right. Agree. I, why not? Ha- it's not like the LeBron thing when he came out and did that show, it was a slap in the face to Cleveland. Nobody cares about the Angel. So everybody knows he's not coming back there. Right. It, it's they have almost a 1% chance. It's almost like he's basically in the league for the first time at this point. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Do you know? Put on a Cub hat, you know, or or put on a Dodger hat, slam it to the ground, and then put a Cub <laughs> yeah, one on. Yeah. You know, something like that. Let's do. But in all seriousness, right? I agree. There should be more buzz about this. I don't want to hear this news from Jeff Passan. I just don't. <laughs> it's just gonna be. It's gonna be a Passan tweet, a Rosenthal. Yeah, I don't want that. Let's right. En- enough of this. Enough of this woj and shams and passing. Scoop, 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 scoop. Let's let's all find out together. Ice cream. Let's just find out together. I hate this instant gratification world we live in, where it's always a race to this. Be first. To post this on Instagram. And this. I get back to the old days. I want to. I want to see it live. Right, right. I want to see it on TV or radio. Yeah, and I don't want to watch this bear game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you don't have to. They're only three-point dogs. A lot of people think they're going to not only cover but win outright. Thank you so much for checking out this edition of Locked On Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes, and we'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube and smash the like button for the algorithm. Shout out to the audio peeps, Apple, Spotify, Sirius XM, and more. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs.